end of World War II brought about a drastic shift in power and a change in the political air in Washington. In April of 1945, Franklin Roosevelt passed away during his presidency. He was succeeded by his vice president, Harry Truman. Almost immediately after the end of World War II, tension between the Soviet Union and America began, launching a new era in American foreign policy. During World War II, an agency called the Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS, was created by Wild Bill Donovan. Donovan, a corporate lawyer and World War I veteran, had been given the rank of Major General during World War II and built a team of 16,000 agents that worked behind enemy lines. The OSS had the responsibility of collecting and analyzing information about countries at war with the United States. It also helped to organize guerrilla fighting, sabotage, and espionage. Donovan suggested to President Truman that the OSS be removed from the military and become accountable only to the president. However, Truman did not want to be allied directly with Donovan. Meanwhile, J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI, believed that their wartime successes put them in a good position to become the official worldwide intelligence service of the United States. During World War II, the FBI had broken Nazi firings in both the United States and Latin America. Hoover bitterly hated the OSS, but had his own political mess to handle after the end of the war. Now, communist spy rings seemed to be operating at will in the United States and had infiltrated the government, leaking secrets to the Soviet Union. Hoover had ignored evidence that this was occurring four years prior and now had to make up for lost time or lose the battle with the OSS over who should control intelligence in the United States. When Hoover came upon information, 12 government employees were working for Soviet spy rings and that five of them had worked for the OSS, he sent a message to Truman hoping it would persuade the president to allow the FBI to take over intelligence. In his hasty attempt to undermine the OSS, Hoover didn't take the time to collect enough substantial evidence, so the case could never stand up in court. This was a diplomatic disaster on Hoover's part. Hoover's failed promises and unproven accusations ruined all chances of the FBI becoming America's intelligence service. Still, Truman did not want to be directly involved with Donovan. The OSS was entirely disbanded by the end of 1945, and by 1946, the two men and their respective agencies canceled each other out, leaving the president to decide an independent agency would take over American intelligence. It seemed, though, that the agency that would later control American intelligence was created behind Truman's back. In late 1945, Alan Dulles, a famous OSS spymaster during World War II and corporate lawyer after the war's end, met with Donovan to explain his idea of an intelligence service that would operate outside of the government. Dolls went on to explain that he had organized a shadow intelligence service that was privately owned and put those people loyal to him in important government positions. He would go on to use the media to keep public opinion in his favor and present the idea to Truman when it was too late to say no. The two of them brought in a third party, a man named Frank Wisner. Wisner was also a World War II veteran and civilian lawyer. He left his law firm and took a job in the State Department as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Occupied Countries. The job had been arranged for him by Dolls, and the position was quickly turned into an intelligence power base. In October of 1945, Ferdinand Eberstadt was employed to conduct the study and set a 250-page report to Congress. In the report, Eberstadt suggested and explained the idea of a National Security Council. The NSC was meant to be a policy forming and advisory, not an executive body, and would be able to wage both peace and war. This report led to the creation of the National Intelligence Authority in January of 1946, which would oversee the also newly created temporary entity called the Central Intelligence Group, or CIG. The CIG would be responsible for coordination, collection, and evaluation of intelligence information. In addition, the CIG could not conduct covert operations. Its personnel spent most of their time debriefing refugees, examining economic reports, and watching news stories as they waited for a mission. These two entities were created without Congress's consent. Dolls was not happy with this organization and wanted a full-fledged government agency to handle intelligence. 
It would be almost a year until he got his wish. As Truman was handling the debate over American intelligence at home, diplomatic issues abroad were demanding his attention. In the United States, the image of the Soviet Union held by the people was being changed drastically by the media. Footage that was once used to show Russia as our great wartime ally was used to portray it as a danger to the American way of life. From its birth outside, it was only out of Soviet Russia's immense and heroic struggle against Germany that democratic nations gained a true concept, past and capability of this nation. By 1946, Europe's economy still had not recovered from the effects of the war. On February 21st, Great Britain informed America that it could no longer fulfill its traditional duties in Greece and Turkey. Communists were starting to exploit unrest in these countries and the English were withdrawing their troops. In America, communists were being portrayed as monsters. And that's why I say they are lying, dirty, shrewd, godless, murderous, determined, and it is not an American political party like any other. It's an outlaw organization taking its orders and instructions from another government to do everything possible to destroy our government. It's an international criminal conspiracy. In what would become known as the Truman Doctrine, President Truman went before a special joint session of Congress on March 12, 1947. He asked for aid for Greece and Turkey and spoke of his opinion on what America's policy must be. That it must be the policy of the United States to support free peoples who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or by outside pressures. The free peoples of the world look to us for support in maintaining their freedom. If we falter in our leadership, we may endanger the peace of the world and we shall surely endanger the welfare of this nation. All of this made the need for a cross-governmental advisory council to the President on Foreign Affairs very obvious. This need was fulfilled by the National Security Act of 1947. Presented to Congress on February 26th, the National Security Act was a compromise between the opponents and advocates of a highly centralized military establishment. This was a diplomatic attempt by President Truman to appease all branches of the military. The National Security Act was originally meant to reorganize the military, but was transformed into basic law for foreign policy and the intelligence community. Renamed from the original CIG, the CIA had all of its former responsibility, but its duties were only described in the most vague terms. It was meant to perform such additional services of common concern as the National Security Council determines can be more efficiently accomplished centrally. The CIA was only meant to fill in the gaps of the current intelligence structure, not to replace or compete with the other departments. The National Security Act of 1947 was passed on July 26, creating the agency that would later play a huge part in the diplomatic mess surrounding the Cold War. Truman believed such institutions were necessary to make prudent decisions, but this was a radically new idea to Americans and sparked debate. Still, he continued to insist that the NSC and CIA, along with other new bodies, were Cold War necessities to protect the security of the United States. Without the original debate between the Office of Strategic Services and the Federal Bureau of Investigation over who should control American intelligence, the Central Intelligence Agency would have never been created. The act that created the CIA was a diplomatic attempt by Truman to appease all of the branches of the U.S. military. The CIA evolved out of a situation that both caused debate and required diplomacy by everyone involved, and without the CIA, America would not have the distinct diplomatic advantage it has today.